friends, my name is Sarah and today we are going to have a little chat about some lessons I learned in 2016. So if you guys have been following me for a little while, you probably know that in 2016 it was my goal to read 100 books. I barely made it reading the challenge, finishing my 100th book on December 31st, and if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I documented all 100 of those books that I read on my Instagram account using the hashtag Sarah Ann Reads. And I started this goal at the beginning of the year because I was really excited. I had wound up reading 88 books in 2015 with my original goal being 52 and I was like, Sarah, you were so close to reading 100 books. Why don't you just go for it? Why don't you just try it? And it sort of ebbed and flowed throughout the year. There were some months where I got behind a little bit early on because of crazy life stuff, but then I got ahead and then I was like behind a book or two again and then I was ahead and then I was on track and like all this stuff. And it wound up being that I did a crap ton of reading at the end of the year, I learned a few things about reading in general and my own personal reading from reading 100 books in 2016. And so today I'm going to share with you the three main lessons that I learned from reading 100 books in 2016. Lesson number one, reading too many series at a time stresses me out. If you watched my statistical wrap up from 2016 or my statistical wrap up from 2015, you probably know that I tend to read more standalones than I do books that are part of a series. It's not because I dislike series necessarily, obviously I have a great love for certain series and there is a part of me that really appreciates being able to spend more than one book with characters, particularly ones that, that I really, really love. But for the most part, I think the reason I tend to lean towards standalones a bit more is because the genres that have historically been my favorite, literary fiction, historical fiction, mystery thrillers, etc., don't tend to have a lot of series in them. It's much, much more common, at least in my experience, uh, with the exception of the mystery thriller genre, to mostly have books that are standalones in those particular genres. And for that reason, I tend to just read more standalones. In 2016, though, I found myself reading a lot of different series. Part of it was just because I discovered a lot of new series in the end of 2015 as I had joined the booktube community and I'd learned about all these new series that I wanted to jump into and explore. But then I found myself sometime in the middle of the year where I was in the middle of, I want to say, nine, maybe ten different series. And these weren't necessarily like series that I was caught up and like the next books needed to come out. These were complete series. All of the books had come out, but I had only read like one or two of them. So I was in the middle of all of these series and I got so stressed about it. And so I intentionally for the next several books I read like got myself down where I was like finished with a couple of other series some of them I decided to intentionally DNF others I just like powered through and finished binge reading them and all of this stuff and I now know for myself in the future that it is not a great idea to be in the middle of a bunch of series at a time and so I'm going to be more intentional in the future about just reading through an entire series if I have the option rather than spreading them all out, you know, trying to vary the things that I'm reading because I do actually really enjoy binge reading series. I find it kind of fun. So yeah, so in 2017 and the years to come, I will remember not to read so many series at one time, which means I will have to be patient as I work my way through all of the series that I have on my radar, but we'll get there one day, hopefully, eventually. Lesson number two, reading a lot is great, but I would much rather read quality over quantity. So in 2016, I read 100.5 books. I say 0.5 because I read a short story that I don't really count as like a full book. And I probably read over 100 books as a kid, but as an adult, and particularly in the years since I started tracking my reading, there has not been a year that I have read 100 books until 2016. 2016 is also the year that my average star rating was the lowest that it has been since I started tracking my reading. I want to say in 2015, I had maybe two or three books that were in the like one to two star range. Most of the books that I read in 2015 were at least a three star or above. Whereas in 2016, I had quite a few books. I think it was at least 10% of my reading, if not somewhere near 15% of my reading in 2016, wound up being books that I gave 2.5 or lower, which means in some way, shape or form, the book disappointed me and I was not happy with my experience of it. And that's kind of sad. And I recognize that I'm never going to be fully able to avoid reading books that disappoint me, reading books that I'm going to give a bad star rating. Because there are some books that I did read in 2016 that 
I thought I was going to enjoy and I was really excited about reading and then just something about the story did not click or fell flat or whatever. I would much rather be more intentional about picking the books that I am fairly confident I'm going to love and enjoy and reading those books and reading them in a smaller amount and really treasuring them and savoring them and enjoying the experience of reading them than just pushing through and reading all of these books for the sake of reading all of these books. And that leads into my third and final lesson from my reading in 2016, which is that when focusing so much on a number, it changes more than just the pace at which you're reading. This was the biggest thing that I noticed throughout my reading in 2016. Again, if you watched my statistical wrap up, you know that 28 of the books I read in 2016, so basically 28% of the books that I read were fantasy. The overwhelming percentage of pages that I read was fantasy, and I just noticed throughout the year that I was leaning toward a lot of YA, I was leaning toward a lot of fantasy and the like, not necessarily because that was like the book that I really really wanted to read, but more because I know that fantasy and YA fantasy in particular tends to be well paced. It tends to have a really quick pace to it. I can usually read a YA fantasy book or another YA book in a much smaller amount of time than I'm able to read an adult book. And so I was reaching for books, not that I necessarily all disliked, but books that I wouldn't have gravitated toward most of the time in order to hit a number. And I found that there were a lot of times throughout the year where I felt like I had to be reading and I really felt like I couldn't be doing anything else but reading, particularly in those months and time periods where I was behind on my reading goal. And I got super, super stressed at points. There were moments where I was like, am I going to finish this? Like, is this even worth it? And to be perfectly honest, the only reason I think I really stuck with it and I really pushed for it was because I did start documenting it on Instagram. And so I had a lot of family and friends who were cheering me on who were super excited for me to hit this goal and I am proud of myself for hitting that goal and making it and you know actually completing it but I just noticed that it changed so much of how I read. It changed not only the types of books I was reading, like I said I was leaning more toward fantasy and YA and stuff like that, but it also changed the length of books that I read. Most of the books that I read this year, I want to say it's like 63 out of the 100 books that I read this year, were somewhere between 200 and 400 pages, which is average for a lot of books, but I historically lean toward books that are like 400 plus, 500 plus. I love those longer books that are slower paced, that are character driven and, and the like. And so not only was I reading genres that are more plot driven than character driven, but I was also reading book lengths that I don't tend to love quite as much. I was reading shorter books because of the fact that I wanted to read more books. So in general, like I just noticed that focusing so much of that number made reading not enjoyable. It made, it took away from so many of the things that I love about reading. It made it really stressful at points and reading is supposed to be a, an enjoyable experience. It's supposed to be fun. Yes, if you're reading a book that is about a really heavy topic or that is about something that's really dark, maybe the actual experience of reading that book at the moment is not a fun thing or an enjoyable thing, but in general, if you find that your reading is marked more by stress and by expectation than by your own wants and desires when it comes to the books that you're reading, then I would argue that there's something wrong with the way that you are reading, that you shouldn't be so worried about things. And that was the overarching thing that I noticed the most when it came to my reading in 2016, that I became so focused on hitting this 100 book goal that I was not reading the things that I wanted to read when I wanted to read them and I was not doing other things when I wanted to do those things because I felt like I needed to be reading and it just, I don't know, it, it changed my reading a lot more than I anticipated it changing and so like I said I am proud of myself, I am very excited for the fact that I can say that I read 100 books in 2016 but I think it is a pretty safe bet that I will never make that reading goal ever again. And you might have noticed that I didn't make a goals video for 2017. I wrapped up my 2016 goals in that statistics video, but I didn't announce any 2017 goals. And that is because I don't 
really have any. I sort of have some loose goals of things that I started to do in 2016 that I want to continue to do in 2017, but I just noticed that making so many goals, and particularly making that 100 books goal, changed my reading more than I ever wanted it to. I feel like the goals are supposed to amplify your reading. They're supposed to challenge you a little bit, but they're not supposed to completely change your reading experience. And unfortunately, that is what happened to me in 2016. So 2017, no official reading goals. My Goodreads challenge is set at 25 right now, and I'm sure that I will hit that and I'll up it, but I'm really not that stressed about it. 2017 is really about reading the books that I want to read when I want to read them and getting back into the groove of loving the things that I'm reading, focusing on quality over quantity and the like. So there you have it, friends. Those are the three major lessons that I learned from reading 100 books in 2016. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you have any opinions on the quality over quantity and how different goals affect the way you read and the like, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you want to follow me elsewhere online, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads, all at Darian Hayes. The links for those profiles will be in the description below. Thank Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye! So, um, don't forget to subscribe. So if you watched my statistical...